how quickly a thousand years can go by when you're busy outdoing Kirox in Rahi creation, while Teradax busied himself with tormenting the Matorna Matanui like a muwaka with a stone rat, I was bringing fabulous creatures into being. True, some of them did not live very long, and yes, one died an explosive death, but I had my successes as well. The Shadow Leech, for example, a mutated crater that could drain the light out of any living being. Who couldn't love that? Naturally, I needed a test subject for it. I traveled to a village in my area of control in search of a Matoran brave, desperate, or stupid enough to volunteer. I could have taken one by force, but after a hundred thousand years, all that screaming and begging grows tiresome to listen to. I was fortunate enough to run across a villager named Vikan, eager to find a more adventurous life for himself. What he got for the loss of his light, instead, was a life of shadow and the honor of being my assistant. A more than fair trade in my estimation. It was shortly after I introduced him to the wonder that is Destral that a most fascinating incident took place. A Matoran went flying through my laboratory to be dashed against the far wall. His armor was crimson, but it was obvious he was one of mine, meaning another beneficiary of the gift of a shadow leech. He was followed by Gorast in her usual state of rage and psychosis. The crumpled heap on the floor turned out to be Voltraz, a Matoran who had been in the service of Gorast for some time before becoming one with the shadows. On a far-flung scouting mission, he had discovered a way into the legendary Card Nui, the core of the universe. That was the good news. The bad news was that he had decided to keep this knowledge to himself, apparently thinking he could benefit from it somehow. That he did, if you consider being beaten by Gorast to be a benefit. Once she had the information in hand, Gorast informed Teradax, who was busy taking a long overdue bath beneath Voya Nui at the time. His reaction was predictable. We were to go to Cardinui immediately, seize it, and see to it that any Admator in there would pose no threat. Eventually, he had no doubt the Toa Nuva would make an appearance there. If they did, his wishes were clear. Icarax, of course, thought his demands bordered on insanity, if not treason to the Brotherhood, and he refused to go. Eventually, Antros gave up trying to persuade him. We'll call him when there is someone for him to break, Ah, uh, team leader said. Otherwise, I can do without his company. Kadanui. How to describe its glory, its wonder, its sheer beauty. How to capture the feeling one gets at the first sight of it. It isn't easy, but let me try. It's a big cave with a swamp in it. At least, there had been the sport of hunting down Matoran, which has kept Vampra happy. Gorast, Bitil, and Krika went down below to ready themselves in case the Toa appear in the swamp first, and I have not seen them since. I'm sure they are fine, certainly. They would not be foolish enough to go into the water so obviously foul. As for me, I am back to creating shadow leeches in my new hive. I have my doubts the Toa won't ever arrive. What sane being would challenge seven Makuta? If they do, things will be most interesting. Teradax tells us we must show restraint. Asking a Makuta to show restraint around Toa is like asking a Rakshi to show table manners. Hmm? What was that? I could have sworn there was a flash of light outside. It must have been pretty powerful for me to see it all the way in here. Well, I suppose if it was anything important, I will find out in time.